Hello, everyone. Welcome again on our Quoted Cherry edition of 2023 in Focus. Today, we have a very special guest with us, a market veteran, Mr. S. Narain, CIO, ICC Prudential Mutual Fund. Hello, Narain, sir. Hello. Right. Narain, sir, so 2023, uh, around the corner, uh, 2022 has been a volatile year. Markets have seen up and down, yet uh, Indian markets have uh, you know, emerged to do better compared to the global peers. Uh, how should a new investor look into uh, investing, uh, considering the markets at all-time high, global volatility there? How should they position their portfolio? In our view, 2023 will remain volatile, particularly uh, in the first half of the year, uh, given that uh, growth is likely to slow down in the Western world. And uh, while inflation will come down and uh, Fed will become uh, less hawkish, and uh, maybe inflation will, uh, maybe interest rates will peak in uh, USA and or in, in in the next three months. Uh, we are in a situation where growth will slow down in most parts of the world, and growth and that will mean that uh, uh, valuations are likely to remain uh, a challenge because earnings come down when growth comes down. So we believe that uh, we are in a framework where uh, multi-asset investing or uh, asset allocation or categories like uh, balanced advantage kind of categories or multi-asset kind of categories are likely to be uh, the kind of categories to invest in, uh, in uh, at this point of time. Because uh, how much the earnings come down when growth comes down is very difficult for us to gauge at this point of time. So we are in a slightly uh, difficult period, but uh, we are going to move from a period where inflation is going to be the biggest challenge to a period where growth is the biggest challenge. Right, Narin, sir. So, uh, you know, last year we've seen a very uh, sort of new trend where uh, we've seen FII doing record outflows, but to back them uh, or to counter them, we've had uh, DIIs and specifically from a mutual fund standpoint, uh, we've seen how the SIP book has grown uh, to 13,000 crore, uh, you know, monthly SIP getting recorded now. How do you see this uh, trend to continue? Basically, what we see is that, uh, you know, the last year was a challenge in the sense that uh, when a uh, dollar becomes so strong, people pull money out of emerging markets. And, uh, you know, we have a situation where all the money goes back only to US. Uh, we are going to be in a much more... Uh, beneficial environment where it is possible that the dollar index has peaked and uh, dollar may have peaked. Uh, consequently, uh, we are in a situation where emerging market may be in a better position in the year 2023. And therefore, uh, we worry a little less about emerging markets than we did in 2022. On the other hand, uh, the challenge uh, domestically is going to be that uh, I mean, if I look at the debt mutual fund category, or if you look at all seasons bond fund or category or uh, any fixed deposit, those will all give much better deposit interest rates than what you were getting in the year 2021 or 22. So debt becomes an alternate category for investors. So what will happen is that in many of the many of the countries people will consider debt instead of equity. So while emerging market as an asset class is worthwhile, uh, the challenge will be debt versus equity for uh, many people. And that can be a challenge more than the problem of 2022. So I believe that uh, there is a, while we are not worried about uh, SIP flows, we are worried that people may start considering debt instead of equity in many of the emerging market countries, including India. And that is a challenge we are going to see that many people will start looking at debt mutual funds also in 2023. Right, Narin. Narin, also there have been, uh, you know, reports published by uh, global agencies which, you know, talk about India's uh, growth, or rather India, you know, becoming the third largest economy by 2030. 
I know 2030 is still, uh, you know, some time away, but uh, from an immediate perspective or from a next year or a one to two year perspective, what are the sectors do you think, you know, where, you know, benefit clients more? What sectors clients should, you know, stay away from considering the heightened volatility which is there in the global macro space? Clearly, the sectors which have done badly in 2022 are the technology sector and the pharma healthcare sector. And both these sectors are sectors that one can consider for systematic investing in 2023, given that uh, these are sectors which have done badly in the year 2022. And uh, we clearly believe that both large cap and flexi cap are more attractively valued, given that small and mid caps have not seen any redemption pressures over the last two to three years on a continuing basis. So while we think consumption sectors are very good uh, for the long term, then yeah, the challenge is that these sectors have been historically overvalued and they continue to be overvalued and they never see any corrections. And uh, so I believe that uh, we are in a situation where we like uh, the globe exporters, we like uh, consumers for systematic investing and we like large cap and flexi cap over uh, mid and small cap at this point of time. And uh, from a sectoral perspective, we 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 found that, uh, you know, uh, we are more neutral on many sectors because many of the sectors which we used to like a lot at various points of time, like PSUs as a theme and various other themes, they have all actually done extremely well over the last two years. That uh, right now we are in a situation where uh, what we used to think as unloved and people used to ask us questions why do you own these sectors they not today we find it difficult to tell people uh, any longer no one else now no one asks us yeah. questions why do you own psus now people ask will you now add more of psus no one now asks why do you have psus in the portfolio so that is the interesting things that uh, now we are asked so that's why I would say it's more complex right now to decide which sector to bet on. That is why it's more important to bet on multi-asset and categories like balanced advantage than to focus within sectors at this point. Right, Nareen. Nareen, also, you know, uh, 2020, uh, post-COVID specifically, you know, we've seen how the digitization theme has picked up uh, in Indian markets. Uh, what could be the key themes uh, or trends which we can see in the upcoming years? which you know could gain a lot of traction i think the biggest gain for digitization somehow has accrued to customers than to companies somewhere i feel and the ease of uh, what digitization has done has made our lives much more easy so if you want to invest in a mutual fund kotak cherry has made it very easy to invest in a mutual fund if you bank want to bank with a bank it becomes so easy to bank today so I believe if you want to book a ticket, it has become easy. If you want to book a hotel, it's become easy. So I believe, you know, some of, sometimes I feel, you know, when I look at it, digitization has its own benefits, but the benefits of digitization has accrued much more to consumers and uh, accrued much, much more to consumers than to find what stocks to buy. Because what has happened is if I look at it, uh, has every mutual fund or every bank created an app? The answer is yes. So what happens is that all of us have gained out of all the apps, but is it easy to determine which, which uh, what is the stock market gain out of all the apps? No, I'm finding it more difficult, but have I gained out of the digitization? Yes, it has made my life much more simpler. That's how yeah, I've been able to buy so many things sitting at home more easily, but who's the gainer I'm finding it more difficult. So I would say that digitization gains are more to the consumer at this stage. And uh, the gain is uh, at the level of the stock, I'm finding it much, much more difficult, but it has accrued to the entire industry like banking, entire industry like mutual fund, entire industry like broking, rather than to only one broker or one mutual fund or one banker. Right, Nareen. Nareen, also, you know, post-COVID, we've seen how the new age company IPOs, uh, you know, we've seen a, a rush of it and then how the new age stocks have performed. Uh, again, we are seeing some bit of, you know, IPOs now coming up in the markets. 
and 2023 will again you know we expect a good amount of uh, companies coming out with their IPOs. How should an investor uh, you know position their investment strategy with respect to IPOs, considering the kind of uh, fall which we've seen in the new age companies post IPOs? Uh, you know it has obviously led to uh, you know slight bit of customer uh, discomfort with respect to this new age company. So how should an investor think about allocating a money towards a particular IPO? What are the key triggers which he or she should consider before uh, thinking about deploying that money? I think basically, we had a healthy dose of skepticism. And that healthy dose of skepticism means that uh, our views are valued today. And uh, in our opinion, uh, in investors should continue to have some views of, should continues to be skeptical. But I think the kind of losses suffered by the initial investors in some of those IPOs means that the future IPOs have to come out come more attractively because the losses that have been suffered by the first round of investors in the new age IPOs means that uh, investors cannot be taken for granted. And I must thank the first round of IPOs for making it much better for us when we look at the second round of IPOs at this point of time. But as investors, I believe uh, skepticism is very much needed, just like asset allocation has to be a mantra I believe that uh, skepticism also has to be a mantra. So if someone says gold starts growing in teak trees, you have to ask this question, can gold start, start growing in teak trees? Like that, you need a dose of skepticism all the time, if you ask me. Right. So Nareen, uh, one final word of advice for our investors, uh, how do we you know, go about with 2023? I think normally I tell people that uh, at uh, whenever markets are at tops, you have to be a bit more careful. Uh, the funny thing is that market is at top, but there's no sign of euphoria. Normally, I, I'm used to seeing euphoria at market tops. And why is it I don't see euphoria today is something which, which is I'm scratching my head there. And uh, when I see euphoria and market top, now I'm very, very negative. This time what has happened is I'm seeing market top, but no euphoria. And it has made me very confused. I would still respect a market top by saying, use asset allocation, do multi-asset investing, and do systematic investing through SIPs. This is what I tell people. But uh, I would say that the healthy situation today that there's no sign of euphoria, is very positive for me, but it also means that the downside risks are a bit lower because if you had euphoria and market top, then you're confident of a fall. But because you don't have euphoria, it means that it is okay to do asset allocation and SIPs at this point of time. But I would still say that the risks are more on the small cap side and less and the and uh, less at the large cap side the way I look at it. This is because uh, of the big selling scene in the initial part of the year from the FIS. So I would say that uh, be in the middle, don't take big risks. At the same time, don't be too fearful because there's absence of euphoria at this point. Of time. Great, then uh, thank you, Narain, for so much, uh, you know, for taking out time and providing such valuable insights to our investors. I definitely think our investors will benefit from the same. Thank you. Thanks to all the Kotak Cherry investors and wish all of you a very happy, prosperous 2023. Be skeptical, follow asset allocation, don't get carried in euphoria, but at the same time, don't be very fearful when there's no need to be too fearful. Be in the middle. Thank you.